previously on Chilling. They keep telling you, oh, Drago, you're not worth it. You're not good enough. You'll never be something in life. When you grow up, you're going to be a shoe shiner. Trust me, that's why we have kids that grow up in a way that their minds are totally psyched in a way that they don't understand what they do. They're depressed simply because of, you know, their family backgrounds. Chilling. Yes, guys, it's Tuesday, and welcome back to Chilling. Now, if you're just joining us, I don't know where you've been. Have you been living under a rock? <laughs> we have been here with Joram since last week, <laughs> my incredible guest. And now, um, uh, on this episode, we're going to go above and beyond, you know, regards to do with um, fashion and modeling world. Because this guy over here is a professional. Now, to be a model, it takes more than just, you know, going and taking good pictures. You need to be professional. Uh, you need to know how to market yourself and thirdly you also need to live to your clients expectations now i'm still chilling with a cocktail of personalities he's a former uh, pageant coach who has mentored over a million of girls and some of them have turned out to be superstars man joram is still with here with me and he's also the ceo of joram model management and also a creative director perhaps yeah <laughs> right? you're right how are you doing man i'm very well i want to first talk about your fashion sense it's always so interesting and intriguing. I mean, what describes your fashion? Daring, timeless, bold. <laughs> Three words. <laughs> exactly. Damn. Daring, timeless, bold. I love to stand out. I don't like to blend in. Okay. Yes. I'm the kind of person whereby if it's an event, you must notice that I'm around. Whether you like it or not, you will notice that, oh, Joram is there. What has inspired your look tonight? Uh, of course, I know <laughs> GAM, you're promoting your own brand. Exactly. I'm promoting my own brand, my great. own baby. Yes. This is great. It's a kind of food. Now you can just start together. This blazer, it's African, authentic. What what has inspired you? And uh, who makes this? <laughs> Do you make Actually, this? Actually, this one was made by myself. I have my special tailor. Like, I just tell them I need A, B, C, D, and then that's it. Is that it. something you've just recently added on your CV? Um, I would say yes. <laughs> you suppose I should have mentioned some about it. I didn't know. I would say yes. Like, I have an eye for details. So, I'm the kind of person that dresses based on the way, I, uh, on the way how I feel. Mm. Like, today I woke up and I wanted to, you know, be a little bit African, but, you know, retro at the same time be very modern that is why i'm wearing very very damaged jeans down there <laughs> <laughs> like i'm very bold I, I don't like boring you know i don't like boring people because i perceive you the way i see you take like me through your closet <laughs> My, let's, let's just take a quick run through your closet uh -huh. what do you have most in your closet apart I, from boots boots i know um, and you have I, certain blazers too colorful <laughs> ones yes i i used to do blazers a lot that is why like today i decided to actually do a blazer as well and then trench coats but then trench coats are out. Like I had to like drop those ones. But now I'm into caftans a lot. Mm. That is why you will see me wearing daring long flowy clothes. How about, like my, how about my look? What do you think about my look? <laughs> Come on, let, let me start and show you. What do you think about my look? Um, not okay, bad. No, no, I'll say not bad. Come on, let, do that. On a do scale that. of do one that. to ten, <laughs> yeah. I'll give you five. Oh! Five bucks for me. <laughs> <laughs> I will give you five. So I'll still telling you about my closet. So I have so many caftans. I have so many robes. I have so many jackets. Mm. Extremely. I don't even know how many colors th th that I do have. And I'm a fan of denim. Like I like to wear denim on denim because it's very timeless. I can wear it when I'm going to work, to parties. It's just about accessorizing them with you know neck pieces, bow ties, and then I'm good to go. Denim. Mm -hmm. uh, wh what do you think about embracing African? Uh, I mean, Africa African. is the future. The campaign has been on. Africanism, Africa is the future. Because you just it's, mentioned over Western brand. True, but at the end of the day, it's you don't have to throw it in people's faces that, oh, I'm pushing Africa, I'm pushing Africa. I mean, we Africans. That is why if you're wearing something African, accessorize it with something very modern, very retro. Don't go the whole way African because you're African. I mean, you're black already, so don't put it in our faces that you're pushing the African agenda so much. I'm not saying I don't like people that are Africans. Okay. I'm an African. L so, let us address yes. fashion because a lot of people, uh, young people have, have tuned into this program. Right mm -hmm. now, I know, because to learn much about fashion and uh, modeling. Mm -hmm. Do you think, according to where the industry is shifting mm -hmm. towards, it, it's, has it registered much progress mm -hmm. in regards to past years? Yes, because right now we are living in a generation that is raising international working supermodels. I mean, look at Amito Lagom. Whoever knew that 
one day Uganda would have a girl that is working in London, Paris, Milan, New York. Mm. Look at Amito, whatever, Amito, I've mentioned Amito, Akelo Patricia, mm. Paul Mwesigwa, I catch Joy Winnie, we just, you know, sent a girl to South Africa like three days back, she's now with Fusion, and then we have Aniet, Ayag, we have like seven international working models at the moment. So the industry is growing. You realize that um, the market here in Uganda is very commercial. Mm. Like the business here only accommodates it, it accommodates people that are, you know, the door-to-door -door faces. That is why on billboards you see anyone as a model on a billboard. But then I've set the bar so high that I don't just want to look at what is going to please Uganda. Here. So you're trying to tell me that you have, um, you have noticed that the face of modeling industry is changing. It has changed. It has changed. Our godmothers of fashion, Silvia Worry, Santa, name it all, they did their part. And right now, we are building up from where they stopped. And we're doing a very good job. What has been the reception so far? Mm -hmm. I mean, to the, the kind of work you're doing. What um, has been the reception, very, especially from those big names you've mentioned? Oh my gosh, the reception is very good. Right now, Uganda is like the future. All international agencies, scouts, casting directors, they're constantly looking at Ugandan models, which is a very good plus. You, you understand what I'm talking about? It's a very, very big plus. Because, you know, way back, you would say, I'm a model, and the first thing that will come into someone's mind, they'll be like, oh, that's a cold girl, that's a cold boy, oh, that's a whore. Like, that's, it, it was one of those um, professions whereby people feel like, I can't even let my child actually go into modeling. But the perception right now is changing. Yes, we still have people that still have that mentality of, you know, models do A, B, C, D, they're not serious people. Teba, Soma, hello, I went to school, I have a degree, and um, <laughs> which is in other Exactly, something. urban planning. I said it urban planning. has nothing to do with fashion. <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all. To be so, <laughs> so nothing at all. Ah, you, did a, you did a degree yes. which so much opposes <laughs> fashion and modeling. I, I, did, I, mean, it, why did I, I started something completely. You know, I, 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 how did you end up in this field? I did urban planning simply yes, because the person that was paying my tuition then, they wanted me to work, you know, in a government office. They wanted me to work in KCCA. They wanted me to be, you know, a physical planner, work with surveyors, engineers. But then my passion was very different. To me, my passion was to, you know, be at New York Fashion Week, Paris Fashion Week, London, Milan, you know, work with big designers, Gucci, Armani. Like, I didn't see myself sitting down in an office, mm. working from eight up to five. I wanted a job that would let me travel the whole world. I wanted a job that would let me do something that, you know, when I wake up, I don't dread going to work because mm. that's what I do like I wake up every day and I'm excited about what I'm going to do I feel like I'm enjoying everything mm. so urban planning it was a great journey but <laughs> I don't see myself doing that anytime no, your, soon. Your, your, your <laughs> management uh, mm -hmm. your, your company has been reported to have mm. at least more than 200 models <laughs> you know uh, but um, I mean what is the description uh, mm -hmm. what is your description of a bankable Victoria mm. model uh, tell me through the casting like who are these guys that you're looking at okay I will say this again I'm very particular extremely particular that is why the word is out there that all oh, drum is very strict drum is very harsh drum is very tough because the kind of model that I'm looking for is not the typical model that Ugandan people are going to embrace I'm looking for that high fashion model I call them the high fashion models I'm looking for that one girl that if you see her on the street it's gonna take you like 10 days to see another girl that looks like her. I don't want to see Drago and then walk down the street and feel like, oh, the guy looks like Drago. Because the international world right now is embracing people that are different. The more weird, the more, I would say weird because here yeah, people describe them as ugly, as weird, as, oh, but nobody do gavunyo. But, you know, there's that movement that is on right now with melanin girls, with melanin boys. The darker, the better. So that's what I'm looking at at the moment. I'm looking at models that can work past Uganda. Because, you know, to be a professional model here in Uganda is, I'm not going to call it a job because jobs don't come every day but then sending models to work in Paris New York London Cape Town all these major capitals of the world they wake up every day and they have castings they're going to jobs they're doing ABCD all those things so I've ever been a model before I exactly <laughs> understand what you're talking about it's hard it's very tough being a model here mm. like I know so many people dream of being models here but it's tough 
tough. So uh, very very uh, tough. People that uh, end up on commercial billboards and advertise advertisements, mm. do they also pass through uh, a scheme like yours? Like do, do they pass exact agencies? Yeah, to true. Them well? They do because I mean I can't just be there and say oh I'm only targeting New York, Paris, London, and Milan. Yes, that's my biggest forte at the moment. But then we also have a different board. We have a board for kids. We have a board for commercial models. The ones that are not too tall, but then about plus oh, size. Exactly. We also opening up a plus size division, but we do have plus size models as well. Because you know clients here are very different. The clientele in Uganda is 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 structured in a way that they want normal looking people. Mm. They're not gonna come to you and tell you, oh, I need a girl that looks like Amito. No. Those ones come once in a while. But then they'll come to you and tell you, I need girls, I need girls that have calves. I need girls that look like Anita Fabiola. I need girls that are exotic. That's what they want. You're a professional yeah. you're in this field. You understand uh, exactly that semi-nude photos are mm. extremely commercial. Mm -hmm. But because of our government came up with the anti-pornography mm -hmm. bill. Uh, do you think that has somehow affected our industry? Is it somehow retarding it <laughs> to a certain level? <laughs> Okay, some models just go the extreme way. You know, like some people are desperate to get attention. That is why you'll no, find I'm talking that about <laughs> a professional. Yes. Like, have you, you, you have been to admit us. Uh, I oh, have, I you, have. You've seen but then, the kind of things she does, and <laughs> the designers they do. They, 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 I do understand. But then, pretty you know, clothes. that's high fashion modeling. But then you realize that, you know, abroad it's very okay. Like if I'm going to advertise a glass, all I need is to show a glass, but then I will feel like probably a girl being nude. Listen, okay, in Uganda, it's yeah. not. It's yeah, let's talk. Let's that, they've not Uganda. yet embraced it. But then it comes back to how do you do this shoot? Like some people do, they do hoochie nude. But then if you do a nude shoot that has taste, that has class, that has fashion in it, it's not going to look like the girl is naked. I mean, we've done those shoots where, by you know, people are like, oh wow, but then the girl is not naked. Mm. You get it. Mm. But here, people don't have taste when they do those shoots. Like, they do them the wrong way. Mm. <laughs> okay, now we are going to take a breather, which is in form of a game. Uh -huh. You know, we get to play some, Let's some, do it. some quick games. Mm -hmm. It's called We Did Say. We Did Say. We Did Say. So we did say, I get to ask you anything. You get to ask me back anything. Mm -hmm. Could be an action, it could be anything. Mm -hmm. So we did say, I, uh, I want you to go and buy me a cock. No, oh, a soda, or any other thing. <laughs> we did say, Joram, go. I'm not doing that. Ah, no, no, why? Why? <laughs> why? You don't have money? Should uh, I give you money? You go back. No, like we should call someone to go and get you a drink. Then go get him. No, I'm not doing it. <laughs> why? Why not? I'm not doing it. Probably I should just give you mine. Okay, sing for me uh, one of Beyonce's songs. It could be one of the famous songs. Okay, just Beyonce. A hook or a chorus or anything. We did say. We did say. Beyonce. Yeah. Beyonce, Beyonce, Beyonce. Say my name, say my name. <laughs> uh, no, no, Beyonce doesn't say my name, say my name, and then she laughs back. <laughs> yeah, because it's very hilarious. It's very hilarious. Okay. When was the last time? Okay, you walked a fashion show. It was because you said you used to be a model. When was yes, the last time you walked a show? I, I did that a couple years, like three years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember how they do that nowadays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it was three years ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, give me six high fashion poses just with your face. Just with, well, just with my face. Exactly. We did say. <laughs> I'm gonna suck at this. Henry, you better not give me a close-up. Because, <laughs> like, when I'm having a photo shoot or something? Go ahead, you're doing a shoot. I just need six poses. Six poses? Very strong poses. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> okay, I, I... Man, I suck at this. We did say... <laughs> Chilling. In case you don't know what you're watching, you're watching Chilling UBC TV and the hashtag on Twitter is hashtag Chilling UBC TV. Now, Joram has found a way of setting the bar high when it comes to um, having a heart for 
lucrative models. You know, he calls the likes calling them bankable models. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. But uh, earlier we talked about like we were busy talking about mm -hmm. you know how progressive the industry is. Mm -hmm. But I want to find out GMM, Durham Model Management. Mm -hmm. Last time I checked, you had uh, prospects of um, making it a, a continental management mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. and also sort of coming up with a reality TV show mm -hmm. that can you know mm -hmm. give a people a window on how you know things are done, mm -hmm. how the modeling industry feels like. Mm -hmm. How far have you gone with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, internationally we've done very well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. We've done very well because, you know, when I started this agency, like I said, my dream was the international world. I love Uganda so much, but, you know, because I've been here, I've seen the hustle. Commercials do pay well, but they don't come every day. That is why my vision was New York, Paris, London, Milan, mm. Cape Town. Mm. As simple as that. Mm. Having models that can, you know, have careers. Because when you work the other side, your career is longer. You can be in the business is, for is, 10 years. Is your company mm. affiliated to us? People like, especially in South Africa because I've noticed that you have this cooperation. It's like, your swap. Like, hey, go, 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 go. We'll be Drago, Peter, uh, John, go, go to no, South Africa. We call them placements. Usually with placements is that it works the same way football works. Mm. Um, when you get an agency, you, you sign a mother agency contract with them. Like literally when the models are leaving here, you're, the, you're, you're their mother agent. You get 10% of all their earnings. Mm. That's a lot of money. I mean, models there are paid in dollars. They're not paid in shillings. So mm. it's a lot of money. So when they're leaving, you sign a contract. You sign a contract with the agency that you're going to be placing them with. Mm. But you're still the owner of the model. Mm. Yeah. So Models are paid white money. Yeah, they're paid very well. <laughs> white I mean, a, money. a campaign in New York, London, Paris, and Milan could go to up to 100,000 US dollars. Mm. And I get like, 10% if you're to, of that. If I'm to work with you, and I was a brand, like yes. a big model, mm -hmm. and if I was to work with your company, maybe mm -hmm. for a certain runway, mm -hmm. an event, how much do you think would be paid to me? If you're a celebrity here? If I'm not like, a celebrity, <laughs> okay, what if I'm special, like how you describe? Okay, let me tell you the truth. Fashion shows here are the worst paying jobs. Sorry, I say it. Better the one. We don't work for 50k no <laughs> I, I know they, they, they make they make them work for 50k no i know like i've heard but you know jar model management you want our <laughs> if you want any of our model rather 50 dollars no 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 at least 50 dollars or 70 dollars yeah. something like that it's cheap but you know based on the economy here because you know designers don't have that amount of money to you know do a show pay models hire musicians do all the, they don't have that money mm. so you can't blame them but you know show here don't pay that much they really don't it's commercials that pay money but at the end of the day I mean you can be on a billboard for a whole year and that's it and Have you're you still achieved here. your main objective of coming up with this company, GMM? Yes, I I would say I have. I, I still feel like it's a baby. We we've we've been in the business for like six years, but I still feel like the baby is now starting to crawl. You get it? It takes time. I mean, all these big agencies working, whatever. Okay, all this all this time now, the baby's starting. To it's crawl. starting to crawl. But I mean, I'm thankful. You'll notice that you know, look at Elite, IMG, DNA. These agencies have been in business for like 40, your, your 40 company something has, years. Has also been established for now how long? Five years. I'll say five years. Uh, professionally? Been, yeah, professionally five years. I'll say five years. But I feel like we are now just starting to crawl. Very soon we will be running and soon we will have the wings. So it's it's baby states. Okay. Yeah. Now since that you wanted to look in front of a camera, mm -hmm. this is an opportunity I'm gonna give you. Yeah? You'll pay me later after uh -huh, the show. Uh -huh. Look straight in one of the cameras and um, just talk to that one person who wants to get in contact with mm -hmm. your management and uh, your, your Twitter handles, everything. Just throw it in. <laughs> throw it in. Hi everyone, my name is Joram Mozira Job. I'm the creative director for Joram model management I'm a pageant coach mentor model scout voiceover artist as well as a TV personality very soon I'll be coming to take your job mm. <laughs> so to everyone that wants to be a model rule number one get to identify exactly the type of model that you want to be I mean not all of us can work in New York Paris London Milan Cape Town Barcelona all those cities that have been
been talking about not everyone you know the international standards are very different they're they're cutthroat you either have it or you don't but still you can be that model that you want to be you can be the model that we can just use the face we can just use your hands we can just use your body those are commercial models so identify the particular type of model that you how want to be and of you? How, how do they get hold of us Joram model management at gmail.com or you can call us plus two five six seven eight two six two five seven six nine or check us on all our social media handles at Jora model management Twitter at Jora model management Instagram at Jora model management Facebook or alternatively we are found in Bugo lobby but strictly appointments strictly appointments, <laughs> strictly appointments. Like, we don't want anyone flooding no in, so. appointment don't show up Thanks check us out on all of we I think we have addressed the fashion <laughs> yes. philosophy and we have we have had a great time talking about fashion mm -hmm. listen I only wish we had more time we should have addressed because I had a billion questions to ask but mm -hmm. forgive me guys we have to end uh, the show right from here but before we do that mm -hmm. we have to talk about a video Okay. A music video. So we have usually get a video segment where we randomly talk about a music video, which mm -hmm. I have to bring up with the guys. Mm -hmm. And today we decided to talk about Love Dokita. Oh my gosh, Vinca's I love Vinca. video. I love Vinca. I'm a huge fan. Yes, I have you noticed that most of her videos are always too colorful. I love her. I mean, she is one person that is very fashion forward. The fact that she was managing an artist before, it, it's actually helping. I mean, managing who? She was, uh, she, she was managing, managing Irene Tale. Yeah, I remember how when she was still Vero. <laughs> so I do, I do remember Vinka. And uh, the fact that she used to manage Irene Tale, she studied the business. You know, there were, she knows exactly what it means to you. There were allegations that uh, she, she was uh, a better replacement of Irene um, Tale. I, I don't want to talk about that. Hey, 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 it was the news. Listen, you're not going to be quoted. I don't know. I don't news, to, but I, I, I feel like she's really doing well. She is. As an artist. She's doing very well as an artist. Besides her, her fashion aspect, well. I think she's doing well as an artist because I, I, in my iPhone, I'm hooked up on her songs. I love like, Vinka. Even I if do. Without watching, I really, really even really if really without really watching, watching the video, mm -hmm. I would listen to a song and I fall in love. I do. And I love the styling in the video. I love the clothes. I love the way she does. Dances. I love you know the colors in the video. I, I'm I'm hooked. Love Doctor. I've listened to that song like so many times. Yeah, so many times. So I'm a huge fan of Vinka. Huge you know, fan. Um, she's so little and so adorable. I know, and she's gonna do well. She's she's a threat. She's a major threat. If if got in time, you think she she'll do well. She'll do very well. The fact that she used to manage an artist before. You know, usually when you go to do something, when you've started it. Mm. It works out for you. And she took her time to she's study whatever she's doing. Music level. Yeah. The songs I've been using yeah. are amazing. Mm. So. <laughs> Great. Great. Uh, Love Doctor was in the first video you, you saw. Uh, for that, no, I like her. Malaika, um, there's Malaika. But I love Love Doctor more because, you know, I'll say the styling there. I know Tazibon did the styling. Kudos, Tazibon. He did the styling, but there's something about that Love Doctor song. It takes me back to, you know, those days where we would watch music videos and feel like, oh, wow, mm. we have an artist, we have a star. Mm. Okay, Tony's going to pass the prison over. Hey, look. <laughs> I got you something. <laughs> it is a strong wow. man. <laughs> and tall. Oh, wow. And Just African. Like me. I know, right? <laughs> this is one thing I love about African. Thank you. Thank I you. Hope you very, like it, very, very, very. I love use it. it. I love it. I'm going to use it definitely. Yeah, that's a key holder, man. It's I love man. it. I'll finally have a new key holder. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, man. Thank you very much for showing up. Thank you so much for it having me. It has been an amazing interview, and mm -hmm. I wish I'd, uh, we could do this again. Thank you. Whenever I call you. Thank you. And uh, you are doing great wonders. Thank with, you. With this whole modeling thing. Thank Okay. And you have totally changed the, the aspect on, on how people perceive modeling. God is good. How people look at models. And, mm. Hey, look, you have international brands. I know, right? At the center, those as well for now. Oh, by the way, there's one thing that I forgot to tell you. Yeah, what? I produce fashion shows as well. Really? Yes. I yes. produce yes. literally all the person, biggest shows. Who I said before yeah. that fashion shows then. <laughs> I mean, they, they don't make that, that much, but I produce literally most of them here. But me, I recommend most, most of what you're doing. 
doing with the beauty pageant? The Miss Uganda beauty pageant. I mean, I've seen footage, raw footage of you when you're, you know, at the boot camp and how you're tough on these kids. Damn. No, I also love pageants so much. Like, I'm the kind of person who loves to see a duck be transformed into a swan. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much for chilling with us, guys. The hashtag was chilling UVC TV. I have to have great fun and we have talks and played games and exchange gifts. <laughs> Joram has been an incredible guest. He is the CEO of Joram Model Management and Creative Director. He's a very talented young man and uh, he wishes nothing but the base for the fashion industry of Uganda. Thank you very much. I have been chilling at uh, La Palais. It has an exotic name. And have given us <laughs> drinks and have done very well for giving us this space. So thank you, Tony, and thank you, um, Henry, and thank you, Herbert, for being with me at the fields, and thank you for doing every single one. I also want to thank Kwanzi Classic, and most importantly, you, the viewer who has been home watching the entire time. Now, chilling is going to return next week on the same date, on the same time. Go on YouTube and go on Facebook, like our page and subscribe on our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. This has been Chilling. I'm Drogo, always your host. See you next week. I love you guys. Next week on Chilling. The birth of the Kalashnikov did not give birth to war. Do not be fooled. Neither did the uprisings of the protesters marching change any verdicts for any trials. We are not in control. Martin Luther King did not bring freedom for the westernized slave men, and Mandela, in my opinion, did not do anything for his kinsmen. Chilling. Chilling. as you're enjoying this episode make it an effort to follow our social media outlets all you've got to do is type in chilling ubc tv like us on our facebook page follow us on twitter and then also subscribe onto our youtube channel